This tag team event on Mid-South Wrestling One Fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing first the team in the red corner at 225 pounds from Romania, Gypsy Joe. His partner weighs 233 pounds from Miami Beach, Florida, Brody Chase. Their opponents, the Mid-South Tag Team Champions, introducing first at 238 pounds from Tampa, Florida, Al Perez. His partner at 236 pounds from San Antonio, Texas, Wendell Wildcat Cooley. Brody Chase and his partner, the experienced Gypsy Joe, take on the popular tag team champions of Mid-South, Al Perez and Wendell Cooley. Now you see Tommy Gilbert calling for the bell. One man is Gypsy Joe against Wendell Cooley. Here's Bill. Well, Wendell Cooley, a youngster that finally got a chance to start him and really has come through. He came here, he had a lot of fire, a lot of desire. He was booked in a lot of smart matches against main eventers. He gave a good accounting of his He learned the hard way. And I think, without a doubt, I've got to agree with most fans. When they face Sweet Hand and Dr. Death, they were thinking about Snake and the Barbarian. And these kids slipped up on them, but they, it was a grueling battle. And since they've got those titles, it's like they say, enough said, we got them. Somebody's going to take them off of us. And they have really given a great accounting of themselves. I want to thank Joel again for that video. Wildcat Wendell Cooley, fine young man. Perez, a good amateur background. He's got one of the most beautiful belly-to-back suplex, high arch. Oh, he did mm. slingshotted Brody Chase and changed his dentures. There you see, there you see that tremendous suplex. One, two, three, and the champion again. And that's one of the reasons, maneuvers like that, that they are the Mid-South Tag Team title holders. Wendell Cooley and Al Perez will be back after this message from Mid-South. With a 10 minute time limit. Introducing first in the red corner at 234 pounds from Tampa, Florida, the unpredictable Dick Slater. His opponent, 235 pounds from Louisville, Kentucky, Steve Constance. Now you heard the introduction, you've heard it earlier from Cowboy Bill Watts and now from ring announcer Jim Ross, and I'll make it a perfect threesome as Dick Slater is certainly unpredictable, and now he's going in against Steve Constance. Well, boy, first time we saw Steve Constance uh, on wrestling, he had a partner named Tim Ashley, and Tim Ashley was injured in that match. He got a brain concussion. And, you know, in athletics, you got to expect some hard knocks, but Tim Ashley decided professional wrestling wasn't for him. But it's a credit to Tim Constance. He came on on his own, and now he's against one of the toughest international stars in wrestling, a man who says he has a mission, but he's been hired by somebody. He has not revealed to us what the mission is or who's hired him or what his purpose is, but Dick Slater doesn't do anything without a purpose. And, of course, as you saw that video, again, that relationship is uh, it's, it's, it's a mysterious thing. He calls her Dark Journey. She seems to be his companion. I don't know if you'd call her a valet or if it means more than that. Just what it is. But right now, Steve Constance is finding out. He's getting a real gut check. He's finding out what it's like to be out there with a man the caliber of Dick Slater. A man that's 250 pounds, 200 pounds, who's quick, agile, vicious. I can assure you, Dick Slater is a double tough hombre. Inside the cradle, he's got it. Steve Constance comes out. You know, the one thing about being in the position of Steve Constance is you got everything to win and nothing to lose when you're a young rookie going up against a guy like this. And this man's aware of it. It's it sometimes, if you can not think of Dick Slater and who he is, it could release the pressure on you because if you could beat him, the whole wrestling world's going to know about it. Dick Slater again, he is just vicious. As you see in the background there walking along the ringside, darker journey. We have Sir Oliver Humperdinck coming up next with Humongous and the Nightmare. In a tag match, then Nick Patrick against Ted DiBiase. Then our television main event, Hacksaw Duggan and Jake the Snake against Dirty Dutch Mantel and El Casario. Next week, right here on TV, Butch Reed will defend the television title. The Fantastics will be here. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. 
Al Perez and Wendell Cooley next week. We're trying to sign a title match with them against Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death Steve Williams. So Grizzly Smith is still negotiating that. The sleeper and Dick Murdoch. Carl Burton is calling for the bell. Dick Murdoch has put Steve Constance. He has shut down the carotid arteries and Steve Constance is in what you call a state of sleep. It's a form of, a, of the blood being shut off to the brain. Now Dick is walking away. It doesn't look like he's going to wake the kid up. Fergie's raised his hand and Slater's ignoring it. Jerry is they're real quick to get out there and get the kid breathing and starting again because you don't want him to stay unconscious too he long. He needs to wake him up right now, Bill. That's right, because you can have a result of brain damage if you're not careful. That's a dangerous hold. Sometimes people take it too lightly, but it's a dangerous hold as one television host of a talk show found out when a wrestler put it on him and dropped him on the floor and he got 21 stitches in his head. This is a dangerous hold. We'll be back now with tag team action after this important message from Mid-South Wrestling Television Network. Introducing first the team in the blue corner at 231 pounds from Atlanta, Don Turner. His partner at 236 pounds from Paducah, Kentucky, Tony Falk. I'll add to the introductions if you don't mind. Ladies and gentlemen, the combination of the nightmare and from the valley of death, humongous. Well, I want to take this opportunity right now, as long as I have the microphone, I have your attention to tell you a few things. First of all, the Barbarian was attacked by everybody's favorite, Jake the Snake Roberts, outside a gymnasium. It didn't happen, it didn't happen in the ring, it happened on the street. Well, Jake Roberts, if that's the way you want it, that's the way you got it, brother, because I can play the same game as you. Now, criminal charges are, charges are pending against Jake Roberts. I don't know if I'm going to take him in court or not, but I'm going to get even with you. And as you can see, I've got the nightmare with me. The nightmare is dedicated for one thing. You embarrassed him, Jake Roberts, right here on this television program by pulling that mask off. So he's got your number, Jake Roberts, and he's going to get you any way he can. And as far as humongous goes, he's been playing around so far, Daddy. I'm pulling out all the stops, and I'm going to show everybody a new dimension of humongous. Well, Bill, we heard the explanation, and we heard, also heard the warning from Sir Oliver Hubbardink. Well, I don't know how you could make Humongous any more vicious than he is, and certainly the nightmare was embarrassed by Jake the Snake Roberts, and he has man, seemed to have an added intensity to all of his since then, as he starts out with Don Turner out there, and he is hammering him. Humongous seems almost like he's programmed. I mean, there's some control that Humperdinck has over him. That thing with, where he sticks the two fingers in the eyes there and stops Humongous, at, it, it, it's an eerie control. I don't know if it's some kind of post-hypnotic suggestion or just what it is, but he's an awesome man. It's a lot of mystery surrounding the barbarian situation. He disappeared. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Jake the Snake seems very non-committal about it. What face lock by the, the nightmare, a powerful man, 290 pounds, solid man, strong. A former North American champion, you've got to remember. Tony Falk enters the ring, tag is made, Tony Falk enters the ring. Now, he, what is, what is Humperdinck doing to Humongous? He's something, he touched him up there in that eye area. Seemingly has programmed him into some situation. The nightmare just ran Tony Falk's face right into that mask, that hockey mask that covers the face of Humongous. And again. He just ran it in again. Tony Falk is badly lacerated. His face badly lacerated. Humongous tags in. Look how strong this man is. If that's the warning that Humperdinck has just given me, to Jake the Snake and Hacksaw Duggan and anybody else that steps in the ring. Shit on the monkey. The powerful man walks in, wastes no time, and Tony Falk has just been annihilated, and he has felt the power of Humongous and, of course, the intensity of the nightmare. Humperdinck, the referee's calling for it. Humperdinck has not stopped the man yet. Now, look at that. Watch that. Humperdinck somehow controls this man. Going back to where you pointed out, and we'll be back. Nick Patrick versus Ted DiBiase after this word. A 10-minute time limit. 
Introducing first in the red corner at 258 pounds from Omaha, Nebraska, Ted DiBiase. His opponent in the blue corner at 228 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia, Nick Patrick. Ted DiBiase being introduced to the crowd here and you heard the booze. He takes on Nick Patrick and on the outside of the ring, Dr. Death Steve Williams as Carl Fergie calls for the bell and the match underway. You know, DiBiase came back a couple of weeks ago and he was highly upset because he'd left Sweet Tan in control of his power of attorney in the Mid-South Tag Team Championships. And of course, Sweet Tan and Dr. Death had lost those titles. It was definitely an upset to Alvarez and Wendell Cooley. DiBiase came back and in his style, two weeks ago, he fired Bruiser Bob Sweet Tan. And then he tried to beat him up and he lost a very expensive custom-made jacket as Sweet Tan ripped it from limb from limb and ripped the clothes right off of him and Dr. Death and Ted DiBiase have been very, very upset about that situation. Nick Patrick, first time here on Mid-South Wrestling. We, we understand he's a competent athlete, but we haven't seen him in the kind of competition you face when you come to Mid-South. DiBiase is, he looks to his fan of Dr. Death out there to gain the quadits from Dr. Death is pretty cocky out there as he's really powering it in with those forearm smashes to the solar plexus area of Nick. Coming up, we have Hacksaw Duggan and Jake the Snake next against El Casario and Dirty Dutch Mantel. Remember next week, Hacksaw Butch Reed defends his TV title. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert will be here. And we're trying to negotiate a tag title defense by Perez and Cooley against DiBiase and Dr. Death. Nick Patrick just caught DiBiase with a body slam. He caught him with a series of body slams. This youngster says, hey, your reputation isn't going to win this match. The ring wise, DiBiase popped him a good one. DiBiase shows him that turnbuckle that brings you to a sudden stop like a freeway wreck. And he threw Nick Patrick out of the floor. Dr. Death standing there. He's promised not to interfere, but we've seen that before, Boyd. We certainly have, and we're watching now. So is the official. Carl Fergie's keeping his eye on him, but Doc just steps back. Carl Fergie telling Ted DiBiase to let him in the ring. DiBiase made sure he got in while he's still a little bit addled from that fall on the floor there. And DiBiase really pouring it on. That's the mark of a great competitor. That's the mark of the men that are champions. But when they get somebody in a lot of trouble, they don't let up. They bear down. DiBiase certainly ring-wise, an international star. He is really punishing young Nick Patrick. That steel cable inside those rubber hoses has no gear. It's shut down the air. Come on, Teddy! Oh, Diviasi with a flat of the foot. That's legal. Doc cheering him on. Dr. Death Steve Williams. A powerhouse in his own right. He and Diviasi is certainly one of the most formidable tag teams in the world. DiBiase, that suplex. Carl Fergie goes to the cap. DiBiase pulled him up. He wants to punish Nick Patrick. That, I think, I don't care how good you are, becomes a mistake. That's an ego situation that can cause you trouble. When you got a guy beat, beat him. See, look at that. DiBiase in a little bit of trouble right there as Nick Patrick got a second chance. But DiBiase quickly kicks it in gear. I think he realized he's fooling around. Now he's going for that figure four leg lock that he's the master of. And you can hear Nick Patrick, he's hollering. He's in a lot of agony. Ted DiBiase got him. Nick Patrick made it to the rope. He made it to the rope. Carl Fergie calling for the break. DiBiase's got to break the hold. Bill, he should have taken that victory just a few seconds ago. Yeah, sure should have. DiBiase pulling him back in the ring. Dr. Death just got covered. Bob Sweet Tan versus Sweet Tan. He just came out of the clear blue and attacked Dr. Death. I don't think DiBiase's even aware of it. Bruiser Bob Sweet Tan. He just smacked Ted DiBiase. Sweet Tan is down there to pound the duck. DiBiase is going to his tight. 
he's loading that glove. We tell he didn't come to help Nick Patrick, he just comes to kick some tail. But Nick Patrick just helped We Ten. It's street style. Carl Ferguson calling for the disqualification, certainly. But Dr. Death and Ted DiBiase, they aren't hearing any bells, but the one Sweet Ten makes off in their heads is the bruiser, former Brass Nuts champion. I can attest the fact he's a tough, formidable opponent. And Dr. Death and DiBiase left. He'll go to the record books as a win for DiBiase. But Sweet Ten didn't come to help Nick Patrick, but it's still a disqualification. But bruiser Sweet Ten is taken again and humiliated Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death. In the one match, Duggan and Jake the Snake versus Mantell and Corsario after this word from Mitch Southwestern. Pressing one fall or television time remaining. Introducing first the team in the red corner at 236 pounds from Puerto Rico, El Casario. And at 232 pounds from Oil Trough, Texas, Dirty Dutch Mantell. Their opponents at 275 pounds from Glens Falls, New York, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan. And his partner, the man with a DDT at 251 pounds from Atlanta, Jake the Snake Roberts. And this to the fans in anticipation of what a battle and confrontation this will be, Dirty Dutch Mantel and El Casario versus New York Hacksaw, Jim as Tommy Gilbert calls to the bell. It's Jake the Snake against Dutch Mantell and his own. I guarantee you, boy, if I was Dutch Mantell, I think I'd have left my bull whip in that dressing room. You know, my daddy said, don't take something in a fight that's not chocolate. You might have to eat it. And look at that pair across the ring. Jake the oh. Snake with the most vicious hole in wrestling. It's been, uh, many guys are trying to imitate his hole, but nobody has it like he does with the quickness, the power, the leverage, the DDT. And Hacksaw Duggan, a man that knows no fear, the not will take anything you got away from you and beat you to death with it. I mean, this is a great television main event. And we got more next week. Hacksaw Butch Reed is going to defend his TV title right here. Wendell Cooley and Al Perez were trying to negotiate that tag team title match here on television. Ted DiBiase naturally trying to get everything set his way. And of course, hot stuff Eddie Gilbert, the man who made the most audacious offer on television for all the young ladies that wanted his pick right in 24, 25 words or less just why they deserve to get it. He'll be here next week. That's this crowd. They were chanting Dugan, Dugan, Dugan when they came out and then the DDT, DDT. And of course, El Casario is like a ship without a rudder with Skandar Akbar gone, but he's a martial arts expert. We know he's deadly. But Jim Duggan, 285 pounds, you saw earlier. Even the world's champion, Ric Flair, has a new respect for Duggan, and so does everybody that saw that match in its entirety. He's always been known as a great brawler. What a lot of people didn't know is what a great wrestler he is. He's always been known for that great heart. And of course, Jake the Snake going for that mask, and he unmasked the nightmare here a few weeks ago on TV. And now, of course, the Barbarian mysteriously disappeared and Humperdinck leveling charges and, and crying foul. How can any man like Humperdinck cry foul? Jake the Snake caught it in the back. And again, that El Casario, a martial arts expert, changes it. Tags in Dirty Dutch Mantel. Dutch, a former TV champion, until Butch Reed took his measure, a man from Long Drop, Texas, who asks no quarter and gives none. Dutch is trying to get Duggan's goat because everybody knows that Duggan's got a pretty quick temper. Buzz Sawyer today almost had a brawl going during a commercial break. It's not easy. It seems like the dragon, when you give him a, a challenge, it's like a, a bull seeing red. Listen, look at that. El Casario just caught Jake the Snake with that thrust. Listen to this crowd solidly behind Duggan and the Snake. This is a great main event. These guys are a well-matched team. And Bill, to back up what you said earlier, I see a lot of wrestlers, and a lot of wrestlers are, like you say, they're trying to imitate the DDT, oh, but yeah. they cannot duplicate. You, uh, I've seen some of the guys with all the national TV exposure even try, but you haven't seen anybody be able to do it. Not like Jake the Snake. Oh, 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 oh,
winding down here. This match could go the distance. Two minutes of air time left. El Casario pounding away against Jake the Snake. Knee lift at six foot five. Jake the Snake has a tremendous leverage. Tag is made. The big man, Duggan, but they drove Jake to the floor. Duggan's by himself. He's going to have one call by himself. And Duggan is carrying the battle. I don't think he realizes Jake is but not. Dutch Van Dell's getting that bow whip. He just whipped Duggan. Oh, Duggan caught it. He got it. Duggan's caught it. Look at him. Duggan caught it. Oh, Jake the Snake's back in there. Wow, DDT. DDT. And El Casario. Well, just got the other end of that whip. I think the more effective end. He got the butt end of it. And Jake the Snake and Hacksaw Duggan just won this match against Dutch Mantell and El Casario, boy. They certainly What did. a great bout. We've had some great matches here. Thanks to Joel for that new video on Wendell Cooley. Also, the video on Dark Journey. Next week, boys, some great bouts. They are. Hopefully, we'll be able to see Al Perez and Wendell Cooley defend their Mid-South titles against Ted DiBiase. Without introduction, without the bell ringing, Hector Guerrero has roared into this ring, and he has taken after him, Ted DiBiase, and taken after him for fair. This is a challenge match, and there was no challenge issue tonight, I can tell you. There was just a, an effort made to take apart Ted DiBiase even before the bell rang, and Hector Guerrero is showing the stuff of which he is made. We now follow them up into the ring as Hector Guerrero does what he's going to do to knock DiBiase out of the running. Hector feels that the injuries given to his brother Chavo by Ted DiBiase have Guaranteed that whenever he sees DiBiase, he's going to try to do the same thing to him, the knock and block off. You notice that Hector hasn't let that let up. And there is DiBiase. He caught one in the, on the jaw, or you might say on the whiskers, and he's catching more. And this battle here at the Sam Houston Coliseum tonight is a special challenge event. And Hector wants to get after Ted's forehead where he has already had a laceration and he doesn't care what it takes, he's going to get after it and try to make it a laceration again. So DiBiase backs in the corner, you see the action. Yeah, but you saw that fist and oh, how he plugged him. He clobbered him. And Hector Guerrero in non-stop fashion is trying to make sure that Ted DiBiase doesn't get even a moment's rest. Hector had better be careful, though. I just sense the way that DiBiase got into that ring. Whoa, and DiBiase hit the ring post. He, Hector slammed him in there. Instead of getting Hector's head, it was Ted DiBiase's shoulder. Went rearing right smack into that immovable hunk of steel. Guerrero is doing everything he can to take all the fight out of Ted DiBiase, but DiBiase is not a man to give up easily, and he's going to have to open up wider and longer and harder and faster. Hamelock is the hold. Guerrero holds it, and here again, he runs him into the turnbuckle in order to work on that arm that was shoved up behind the back of, of DiBiase. I'll tell you, Hector Guerrero is a fired up man. He is a, a man who is on a mission, he's on a quest. He is out for revenge, and there's no question about it. Here he goes, up and down. That's two, one, two. And DiBiase being set up again. A back body drop and a beauty. He ducked under him and caught him right at the right angle. 
Well, he, there was something that Hector Guerrero could not have prepared for. Grabbed by the trunk, he was jerked into the rope and through the rope, and he is off here on the concrete. Right alongside of us here at ringside at the Sam Houston Coliseum, and as the ring cameraman runs around, he manages to pick Hector up in the position on the concrete, but now trying to get back into the into the ring. Well, Hector was trying to keep DiBiase from getting in the ring, and on the concrete, he slammed him. And he slammed him in a manner that made his sacroiliac hit first. Bad deal for Ferrero. He is getting the count. The count is six. And there goes DiBiase. That count will break. But DiBiase doesn't care. All he wants to do is do what has been done to him on this night, and that is to be jerked around that row. Oh! I'll tell you, DiBiase is the man who now senses that he has an advantage, who now believes that he is going to be going someplace, and he's going to ride roughshod over Hector Guerrero. Guerrero up to this point has put up a sensational battle by keeping after DiBiase all the way. Here's and the crowd here just roars off with every wallop. And DiBiase, looking worse for wear right now, takes on a man who has survived as much punishment as Ted survived early in the match. And here comes the diving effort by Hector Guerrero. There's one, there's two, and this time it's DiBiase who barely, barely manages to get out. Ten minutes have gone by, and there, oh, hit on referee Tommy Kilman. Uh, and he landed on my head, and he is on the ring apron right now. DiBiase is working on that um, glove, and the, uh, he hauled off, and he let Hector Guerrero have it. Right in front of us is the referee. Out in the middle of the ring is DiBiase. DiBiase looking for the call, trying to get the referee over. And here's, here comes DiBiase now. He's trying to work a little something into me. I got, I'm the guy who got hit on the top of the head too, but uh, not with the force that happened to Tommy Gilbert. And now we've got Bob Sweetan who has come into the ring. Bob and DiBiase have been bitter enemies. And, and Sweetan is claiming that the glove is loaded. And Sweetan is deposited on the outside of the ring. And the feud between... There's a, there's a quick wrap up and Hector Guerrero took the fall. Hector Guerrero who was lying out there cold. Hector Guerrero takes the fall, and Hector has most certainly survived one of the narrowest escapes he has ever had. Now it's Dr. Death in the ring, and Dr. Death has come in to hold on to Hector Guerrero and to give Ted DiBiase a standing target that couldn't move. No referee. There is Guerrero catching it again and the Guerrero has been cut open and now with DiBiase and with Dr. Death hauling after him we've got a round robin going on here. Here comes Bob Sweetan. Sweetan is just, has just risen. There you see him in the background coming back into the ring and disappearing again as Dr. Death goes after him and we've got problems in the ring here as these two guys lay it on Hector Guerrero in no uncertain terms. And the crowd starts ho hollering for Dugan. They want Dugan in that ring. Here comes referee Paul Fergie. And Fergie is he's coming in to try to even things. And the 
There goes Sweet Tan into the ropes and down and out. And Hector Guerrero is... that logging chain he'll get his head ripped open mm. we got to get some help out here man there with the step they got to take the snake they got to try to restrain duggan because duggan sometimes he's just too there with the other steps on the far side bill grizzly's got to get some people down there doug as he he'll go in a suicide attack and buzz sawyer's a madman now they're chanting ddt Trying to restrain him. I tell you, boy, isn't there something? Well, saw you, it's crazy. With a 10 minute time limit in the red corner from All Trough, Texas, Dirty Dutch Mantel. confrontation here on Mid-South Wrestling. The Fantastics represent by Bobby Fulton. There you see Dirty Dutch Mantel. Joe, this situation has been brewing for quite some time, and Grizzly Smith once again is to be commended for his matchmaking efforts in pairing these two fine athletes, both tremendous rivals as Mantel. Well, you can see the open hand. Mantel and now Fulton coming right back with a right hand of his own. Jim, there's certainly no love lost between these two men. We've seen uh, a lot of animosity that is brewed between the two of them and their confrontations between the Fantastics and Dundee and Mantell. Collar and elbow tie up there, arm bar and twist, and Mantell gets his weight on top of Fulton, ever the strategist. Mantell goes to the tights, and there you see he's maneuvering Tommy Gilbert out of position. Gilbert, I think, senses the uh, rule infraction there. Arm drag. Both men back to their feet quickly. Mantell, the more experienced of the two athletes. I think Fulton would have the edge and perhaps the explosiveness, but Dirty, dirty Dutch Mantell looked to me like he used the hair from, from our vantage point here on the monitor. Fulton reversed it with the head scissors. Mantell going after those legs. Fulton has a lot of pizzazz. That's a, I don't think Fulton, when he does that, is necessarily showing off. I think it's also a psychological tactic. Much like the slap we saw Mantell employ earlier in the match, although not quite as physical. Or Mantell throws Fulton completely out of the ring. Fulton down on the concrete floor. Mantell going to the ropes, and Tommy Gilbert is breaking him off. Mantell started off pulling the tights. There he he threw his opponent out of the ring. He's certainly setting the tone for this contest. And that right hand found a home right to the jaw. Jim, I'd like to add that that right fist of Mantell is taped up. And that only adds to the power. 
on the abrasiveness of that fist. Fulton staggered. Mantell with a power slam. Mantell with a power slam, but I don't know if he connected with it quite as well as he could have. A little early in the man match for Mantell to be that confident about gaining a fall, especially on the likes of Bobby Fulton. Fulton with a hard right cross. He lands a few of them there. He gets up on the rope. He was hammered, Mantell. He gets that arm whip. Bobby Fulton is quick to gain the momentum on a competitor. There, Mantell using the ropes. Mantell's using the ropes. He, th he thinks he had to follow the right position. He tried to use the ropes for his, to his advantage. Mantell just about had the fall there. Every Tommy Gilbert, a fine ref. And now it's Mantell using the tactic that Fulton used on him earlier. And now it's Fulton. Fulton's got him, and now Fulton using the ropes. Yeah! Bobby Fulton with a fantastic pull one out of the bag. Well, turnabout is fair play, and there you see the winner, Bobby Fulton. And when we come back, the television title will be on the line right after this. Television title, that means it's one fall or 15-minute time limit. In the red corner, the challenger from Puerto Rico, El Casario. And in the blue corner, the Mid-South television champion from Kansas City, Hacksaw Butch Reed. Your referee, Carl Fergie. One fall with a 15-minute time limit, Mid-South television title line. The most prestigious television title, without a doubt, in all of professional wrestling, in as much as that Mid-South Wrestling is the number one ranked syndicated sports program in America. It puts all the clout, all the prestige, and it's all on the line, Joel, right here on Mid-South Wrestling. Well, they go straight to the basics with the collar and elbow tie-up. Reed with the uh, definite strength advantage in this match. He fires Casario off, but Casario looking, uh, looking quite respect respectfully on Reed. Reed again fires him off, and Casario, I think, is going to have to try some different tactics. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of athletes in professional wrestling. Most of them, as a matter of fact, they're not going to be able to match strength for strength with Hacksaw Butch Reed. He is in phenomenal condition, and he possesses just, well, bizarre strength. He is, uh, he could, he pushes around 500 pounds on the bench, and he does it regularly. El Casario's chance in this match, and it's a great one, exercise his martial arts skill, of which he is extremely proficient. Oh yeah, if he can catch Reed off guard, he definitely has the power to administer a blow that can render anybody uh, helpless for a three count. And uh, I think Reed is, has got to give Casario some respect, and I'm sure he's going to. Reed is a great, great athlete, and of course, he gets better all the time. I just, I'm telling you, every time he steps in the ring, I hate to be biased, but I, I don't know. I, right now, I, I just don't know if there's anybody that could defeat Butch Reed in just clear-cut, out-and-out competition. Uh, the, the man is, he's just, like you said, Jim, it's uncanny how tough he is. And with the experience that he's got, he's in his prime. He is, in my opinion, unstoppable. I wish him the best of luck in his quest for that world's heavyweight title. And of course, the situation between he and Murdoch has, uh, has not cooled off a bit. It certainly hasn't, and it's also very hot in the ring right now for El Casario. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just joined us, this match is for the television title. We have yet another championship confrontation a little bit later in the hour. That one for the Mid-South Tag Team Titles. There's so much more. If you, this is the first time you've selected to join us for Mid-South Wrestling, you pick the most opportune time I can think of to join us, and we certainly appreciate it. Well, Casario's got Reed in the ropes, and that is a not an advantageous position for Reed, but Reed reverses that arm whip and manages to fire Casario into the turnbuckles as well. He's hitting him with those big soup bones, and you got to know that Casario's getting staggered. There's that kick! There's the kick! He caught him! He caught him off guard! We got it! We're, it looks like we got a new TV tip! No! Reed powers out! That shows you what kind of athlete he is because El Casario, you said he put down the toughest competitors that there is. Hacksaw Butch Reed powering out at El Casario now, seizing the moment. He knows the moment is in his corner. Going for the goal, the Mid-South Television title in jeopardy here on Mid-South Wrestling. Jimmy got to give credit where credit's due. Casario is so fluid, and he's powerful to boot. That martial arts, he is a, he's a force to be reckoned with, no doubt about it, but he has hit Reed with his best shot. 
and Reed powered out. Granted, it's early in the match, but it just goes to show you Reed is so tough. He's, he is just bad. That is all there is to it. A chop to the throat. Casario with that arm whip into the ropes. Reed coming off. Casario again with that chop. He goes down. He gets a two count. I guarantee you one thing. He or anybody else doesn't wrap a leg on Reed, try to cradle him on those shoulders. They're not going to pin him. He's too strong, and he is a competitor. He is an athlete, and he is, well, he's in the class by himself. We said that. Now El Casario coming right back. Hacksaw Butchery's got to reach down. Television title on the line in this confrontation. El Casario fires Reed up, and Reed catches him. Reed was shaking off those chops. Reed has cleared the cobweb successfully. He hit the drop kick, and now I think we see the tide turning. Reed with the soup bones to the jaw. Reed's connected on Casario. Casario there in a last ditch effort trying to get those karate thrust up, but he was out of it. I don't know if they have soup bones in Puerto Rico, but if they don't, when Mr. Casario goes back there, he will be able to explain it in depth. And Reed with a gorilla slam. He's got him up. He's pressed the man. He has pressed the man. And this could be it. Casario's a tough customer. Reed going up to the second rope. A high risk maneuver. Yeah, he connected. He connected solidly. He's planted El Casario with three. Hacksaw for three. Soup bowls and all. A still the Mid-South Television champion. And we'll be back with an awesome tag team combination. Right after this from the exciting Mid-South Wrestling Network. Introducing first, in the blue corner, the team of Nick Patrick and Steve Thompson. And the team destined to be number one in the Mid-South, managed by Sir Oliver Humperdinck. I'm talking about the nightmare and humongous. Your referee, Tommy Gilbert. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing about it, I don't agree very often with Sir Oliver Humperdinck, but be that as it may, last week, he said he was going to set an example, was going to handle things his way, as we see Humonga step over the top rope, one of the few men in professional wrestling that will exit the ring, or enter, as far as that's concerned, in that method, but they set it for the wrestling world last week. Oh, the nightmare a little psychological tactic there going for the handshake but he brings a kick to the midsection of Nick Patrick Patrick he gets the hip toss arm drag so Jim you brought up an interesting point last week Humperdinck also said that he was going to exhibit a new side of humongous uh, he, is, he has not used Humongous to his full potential. It'll be interesting to see just exactly what Humperdinck means by that, and I think it has something to do with that mask. I think Humperdinck has got some kind of post-hypnotic suggestion exercising in Humongous. It's some of the control that I've seen him execute is very so Nightmare! Using Humongous' mask as a weapon, he fired Steve Constantine into that mask. Constance is in a bad, bad way. He looks to be unconscious. He suffered a laceration. He certainly has. And last week we saw the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. The same thing last week. Humperdinck with that some kind of signal. And Humongous with a tremendous strength. We saw that same signal last week. And now they're going for the shit in the monkey. And Steve Constance is in such, such trouble. The referee has got to be extremely careful in this situation. He's going to call for the bell. He's calling for the bell. Constance is with a clearness flowing. Constance is severely lacerated. That mask. That mask is an unreal weapon. The winners of the match. And in devastating fashion, humongous in the nightmare, Humperdinck has really got something here, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll be back with a look at hot stuff right after this. Time out. Time limit. In the red corner, dressed from Lexington, Tennessee, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. And across the ring from Chicago in the blue corner, Mike Nichols. Thanks for staying with us, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Ross and Joel Watts with you at ringside. 
Mid-South Wrestling as Carl Fergie calls for the bell. These two men, very evenly matched as far as their size is concerned. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, perhaps so, with one of the bigger egos in wrestling and a cheap shot with Mike Nichols. He's taking right over on him, Joel, right here at the outset. And we're seeing a little mean streak in Hot Stuff. Well, Hot Stuff's definitely taking the fight right to Mike Nichols, but of course Mike Nichols looked like he was pretty hyped up for this battle also. Mike Nichols desperately wanting to move up in the ranks. He's got a great amateur background, but of course, Gilbert, I think, with the edge of the professional ranks. Gilbert with the arm whip. Whoa, what a right cross, and he absolutely leveled Nichols. There you see Gilbert doing that strut. Gilbert still trying to give away that uh, portrait of his for any of the young ladies who are interested. Gilbert with a rear chin lock. Gilbert with a half Nelson. Now the rear chin lock. Hot stuff Eddie Gilbert, as I said, with one of the larger egos in wrestling and it seems to be growing all the time. He's constantly feeding his, his own self-worth. But uh, being a former pro wrestling rookie of the year, he has the athletic background to back a lot of it up. Yeah, he really hurt Nichols with those kicks to the face. You know, I think like you said before, we're seeing a side of hot stuff Eddie Gilbert. Gilbert making a comment about girls sending letters. You know, I think that's uh, to the fact that uh, his ego is just awesome. It could be just a little bit too much. That could be a... A, uh, a detrimental factor in some matches. Well, yeah, he's got his legs wrapped around Mike Nichols, inflicting the ultimate insult there moments ago, slapping the man. There you see that again. He's got him in a crossbody ride, which is an amateur move, and Nichols, Nichols manages to make his way out. I think Gilbert more or less letting him up in that instance. Gilbert has controlled this match from the onset. Gilbert, I think, trying to make a statement here other than just the competition of this match. Well, he's a very flamboyant young man. His lifestyle is indicative of that statement. Perfectly executed uh, suplex, Joel. He is the mechanics. He has got him down. He's a fine athlete. There's no doubt about it. There's a pinning, and he just lifted the man up. Oh, he could have pinned him right there, I think, if he had a one or two. Mike Nichols was... Trying to fight back. You've got to give that to Mike. He's, he's, he came to fight. He came to compete. Well, Mike's fighting back here. And see, that was a tactical error on Gilbert's part. Because I think he could have got the fall there. But he could be in trouble. Oh, no! Whoa! Gilbert got Nichols against those ropes. Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert with another victory here on Mid-South Wrestling. He's so proud of himself. And ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, the Mad Dog will be on the loose after this from the Mid-South Wrestling Network. All with a 10-minute time limit. In the blue corner, Don Turner. And stalking the ring in the red corner, the Mad Dog, Buzz Sawyer. Your referee. Hey, I got something to say here. I want you to listen. And I want all these stupid people here to listen. You know something? Remember, I started out on a tour. I went to New York. But I found out there was no fun because there was no competition. I slapped Hulk Hogan and Chuck John Dog around. I said, no wonder you're here because this is third grade. Then I went down to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. I went down to Atlanta, Georgia, and I whipped everybody, and they got rid of me because I was so tough. And everywhere I ever been in the world, I hear the name Jim Dugan. Well, Dugan, a tough guy. Come and find a mad dog because I know what it's like to be slapped. I know what it's like to have my nose upside down. You. I know what it's like to be beat up because I like to get beat on because then I get me and nasty. And when I get beat up, it's such a... Then when I get beat up, I get beat up more and more. Then I start beating them. So hey, tough guy, self get Reach down in that audience and show me what you got. Because if you ain't got no more of these people's got, you got a big dinner ahead of you, the mad dog gonna come and do you up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
Mad Dog Bus Sawyer with those comments and that deadly, deadly dog collar chain. The chain's deadly, of course, but I tell you, Joel, some of those comments, uh, he's like he went in and out of coherentness. This man is, uh, well, there's none There's none like him. Uh, and, I, I don't think he's playing with a full deck, uh, to be quite honest with you. And he's there, he's trying to get uh, Don Turner to, whoa! He fires Turner's head into the turbuckle. It looked like he was trying to get Turner to put that dog chain around his collar, and Turner would have to be more nuts than Sawyer in order to do that. There he goes to the snap mare, and uh, I don't think Sawyer give Turner any surcease in this match. High vertical suit play. This man is so rough and rugged, and as I said earlier in the hour, he, like Jim Duggan, has no regard for his own personal safety. He was saying they're uh, ripping so at the face. He just... He is a mad dog. He's like a pit bull. He's going for the kill. And look at that. He's rubbing Turner's face in the mat and still calling for Duggan at the same time. Well, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, ladies and gentlemen, is not here at this television studio, or if he would be, I will assure you, Joe, he would definitely be at ringside, if not in the ring. I agree wholeheartedly, Jim. And bro, when that confrontation comes around, there is just... I don't know if, if any arena in the country is going to be able to hold Ooh. down. Oh, my Ooh. goodness. That. You talk about a drop kick that tearing somebody's head off. There's not, an, there's not a weapon in his arsenal that he has not mastered. And the right back again. He's not trying to pin anybody right now, Joel. He just wants to hurt somebody. That is his whole bag. That's his whole situation with Buzz Sawyer. Well, he's just about to cap it in Turner. There's that power slam. And I'm glad, because I'm telling you, John Turner practically decapitated there with that drop kick. Mad Dog Best Sorry, there's a good look at him right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come right back with Tommy Rogers versus Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater right after this time out. In the red corner from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater. Slater goes right out after Tommy Rogers, and there is a verbal confrontation at this point in time. But when, when Dick Slater's around, verbal confrontations, Joel, very quickly become physical confrontations. Well, Dick Slater, I think, is in the uh, same mold as uh, Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. And his opponent from the City of Angels, the fantastic Tommy Rogers. Well, they call him Mr. Unpredictable. In some parts of the country, they call him Mr. Excitement. Whatever adjective you choose to describe Dick Slater would probably fit because he has many personalities. Many personalities and many facets to his ring tactics. He, uh, he's very well versed. I've, he's got such a wide arsenal. He is really a force to be reckoned with, and not only is he a great technical wrestler, brother, he can brawl with the best of them. Judo throw, but Tommy Rogers is so quick. He has so much balance, he landed on his feet off of that thing. I don't know if there are too many wrestlers in the entire country that could have done that. That very attractive young lady you see there, company's Mr. Slater. Well, everywhere that I've ever seen him, uh, Dark Journey is what... Uh, Slater calls her. Her situation is also a very cloudy situation and as much as he's very secretive as to who she is or her involvement as far as professional wrestling is concerned. Slater's still saying that he's here in the Mid-South on a mission. 
Slater with that hard shoulder smash coming off the ropes and Rogers catches him. Rogers caught him. Rogers is a great athlete, but Dick Slater as well is a fantastic athlete. You know, Joel Rogers, Rogers is a, uh, he and Bobby Fulton making up the fantastic, of course, tag team specialist in many people's eyes. This is a great one-on-one -on -one challenge for this fine young athlete because Dick Slater, I was reading the Dallas uh, Times-Herald the other day, ranked the top five in the world by the Dallas Times-Herald poll. That's a very prestigious poll. It's a very influential newspaper. So Slater's well thought of around this globe. Jim, I think in weight class, Tommy Rogers has got to be in the in the top five in the in the uh, entire world as well. Fantastic athlete, but doesn't have the experience that Dick Slater does. Both men breaking slowly off the ropes. Whoa! Slater with that slap. Slater slapping Rogers, using that reach advantage. Oh, he fires Rogers completely out of the ring. He's going out after him. Look at Slater poised. He's poised on the ring apron there, ladies and gentlemen. And Rogers, oh, he kicked him right in the face. Slater kicked him right in the face. And Rogers may well, he may well get counted out right here, Joel. Oh, he went down hard on the concrete. Both of those blows together would put the ordinary man out of consciousness, I'm convinced. Slater, like I said, at the same mold as Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. He's liable to go off at any time. I don't know if he's playing with a full deck either. Dark Journey there insisting that Slater continue the punishment. The mission he is on. Oh. Slater, tremendous execution. And Rogers, let's give, boy, you've got to give that guy credit. He is fighting with, with everything he's got. He's in great condition. Slater tried to pin him twice, and they finally wrapped the leg, and Rogers still kicked out. He's a fighter. You said that a lot of times, Joel, about this young man. He's got a great fighting heart. Not only that, that conditioning will pull you through a lot of bad situations. Bring you down for the count. This could be it. He cradles a leg, but still can't hold Rogers down taking a lot of punishment. Out goes Rogers again. Well, Slater tried three or four times to pin him. He, got, he couldn't get his job done in that particular situation. Rogers in that great condition. So Slater, another team shot. And Rogers is in severe trouble. The second time that Slater has thrown into the concrete here on Mid-South Wrestling. Well, Jim Tommy Rogers could work the situation to his advantage, I think. That little respite could be a key move for him in this situation. And Rogers, I mean, he's impressed me thus far in the match. He, that, let's not discount the possibility of an upset. Slater's got him up that high vertical suplex. Rogers he gets it. Rogers was trying to kick out. Rogers was trying to bring the momentum back and swing the man back. He could not do it. Look at Slater's poise. Slater goes for a flat headbutt. He goes for that long distance headbutt, and that was just a little bit too high risk of a move as he missed it. And Tommy Rogers. Back up to a base. He fires away to the midsection. Let him go with that tremendous physical conditioning of Tommy Rogers is paying off. Look at him go. He's firing up on Slater and he's got to keep the momentum going. Headbutt. A headbutt, a very effective one, but Tommy Rogers bringing Slater to the ropes. Hip toss. Tommy Rogers is like a buzzsaw in there. Slater's a quick thinker, but it's tough to keep up with Rogers. He takes Rogers to the turnbuckle and turns the momentum. He certainly does. Slater now back on the offensive. He is so dangerous in this position, and he oh. kicked Rogers right in the face. Oh, man. I've never seen Rogers. Slater very vocal and very vicious on his mission in the Mid-South. The North American champion wanting to eliminate him. And now he's got the sleeper. He calls a good night, Irene. It's world-renowned Slater Sleeper. Good night, Irene. Tommy Rogers, in his physical shape, and he's got such a fighting heart, but he is really taking a beating this far in the match. Be careful, referee. Be careful in this situation. This is a deadly, and I mean a deadly maneuver. But by rule, he's got to check that arm three times. There's twice. The third time. 
Fergie calling for the bell. Dick Slater, ladies and gentlemen, with the good night, Irene, his version of the sleeper hole. Now, by rule, once again, he's got to wake this man up. This is a very, very dangerous situation. Look at Slater. Slater's kicking him. You can see that Tommy Rogers is oblivious to it all, completely unconscious. Slater moving in. I don't think that's going to wake him up. The referee's got to assert himself right here. What's he going to do? Dark Journey circling. She's got those spike heels on. Uh-uh. No. What is he doing? I. This is a... Well, ladies and gentlemen, Dick Slater, they call him Mr. Humphrey Dick. Well, thank goodness that Rogers is back to consciousness and we're going to come right back. Don't go away. The Mid-South Tag Team titles will be on the line right after this. Time out from the Mid-South Wrestling. All our television time remaining for the Mid-South Tag wait Team titles. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You give us a title match on television, then Mid-South puts us on the last mid with four or five minutes left to go. That's not enough time. These guys will run for five minutes. You'll run for five minutes. That's, that's a disgrace. It shouldn't even be here today. We're you not guys. Going anywhere, dude. If you want your match, you wrestle it today. Let me tell you something, Paul. Hey! Hey! Well, we got it all breaking loose right here. I mean, it is. They're going to microphones and belts and everything else in the ring. And when the referee finally calls for the bell, Tibiasi. He was in a oratorical mood and took a cheap shot. And if you don't think those two young gentlemen, Wendell Cooley and Al Perez, won't fight you, well, then you better think one more time. I guarantee you. They're both great athletes. Well, actually, all four of these men are great athletes, Jim. It's going to be one heck of a confrontation. Once again, those Mid-South Tag Team titles are on the line, and it's a brawl. They're going fist and fire. Fibiasi fires Cooley over that top turnbuckle into the ring post area. Well, the referee has got more than he can, well, he's got more than he can handle, I guarantee you, these men. And Cooley, I, he really hit that post hard. And Ted DiBiase picking him all the way up over that top turnbuckle, taking him in there with a lot of momentum. Dr. Death has got Cooley wrapped over that top ring rope. Oh, hard elbow. Look like Cooley had a laceration there, ladies and gentlemen, from that post, the referee. Now remember, this is for the Mid-South Tag Team Titles. One faller television time remaining. DiBiase off that second rope with the elbow. DiBiase and Doc obviously going to try and keep Wendell Cooley in their half of the ring. DiBiase with a body slam. DiBiase working on that lacerated head of Wendell Wildcat Cooley. And the young Texan from San Antonio is in deep trouble and Joel, he desperately needs to make the tag as quickly as possible. DiBiase. Well, DiBiase is Ted DiBiase. That is his style. Wendell Cooley is, is really in a bad, bad predicament right now. Al Perez coming out trying to stop that double teaming. But at that point, I think he realized it might be even more of a disadvantage to get the referee out of position there. He goes for the rear double clip. Beautiful move by Cooley. Brother, he came for the grave for that, for that move. Beautiful. Beautiful. DiBiase misses the right cross, and Wendell Cooley could be making it. DiBiase with the hair. And he pulled him back to his corner of the ring. That's why DiBiase and Dr. Death are regarded as as good a tag team combination as there is. Jim, Wendell has got a great fighting heart, and he is in fantastic physical condition. But if Tibiasi and Dr. Death manage to keep Cooley in their half of the ring, there's no doubt in my mind that they'll be able to take this Mid-South Tag Team titles away because they have got Cooley in a bad, bad predicament. That blow to the steel post had to have caused severe damage to Cooley, as we can see by the lacerations. Now, Dr. Death with that high vertical suplex. Tommy Gilbert down for the count, and it's just a two count. Dr. Death did not great find that leg, and now DiBiase back in. Now he is the master. He is the master tactician. He's going for the pile driver, Jim. He gets it. He got the pile driver. He got the pile driver. 
He goes for the lateral press. One, two. We've got Newman. Oh, we were two and three quarters to two minutes ago on the television program. And we were, I mean, so, so close. He goes for the pile driver again, but Cooley reverses. Cooley with the reversal. What a heart. What a heart. DiBiase has got to be wondering what it takes to put the Wildcat down. He here, tags in Dr. Death. Here comes the brute from Oklahoma University, Steve, Dr. Death Williams. He didn't play punter for OU, but he, he would have qualified with those kicks. He's trying to use that top rope to his advantage, and Cooley, Cooley comes out on top with the lateral press. Make the tag, Cooley. Cooley needs to make the tag. He's got to make the tag. You hear the fans getting solidly behind Will Cooley. Dr. Death with a hard right cross. But don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, next week, Max Becker, Grizzly Smith, trying to sign a North American title match between Murdoch and Reed. Those litigations, the match is pending for next week. Jim, a key move was just made there. Dr. Death went for the coup de grace on Wendell Cooley, but he missed it and hit the turnbuckle. Cooley trying to make that tag. He's moving ever so slowly to Perez, and he makes it. He made it Perez with that right cross. He's firing away on DiBiase. He's pounding Dr. Death. He's got them both going, Jim. Perez so powerful, and he's a fresh man in. Great physical conditioning, and he has hammered him. I mean, he's hammered DBS, the attack. And Cooley's fighting back. Boy, we've got it going right here. Cooley inspired by his partner, I think. Oh, oh, that's a 15 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. What a matchup. What a matchup. We're about to run out of time for our ring announcer, Boyd Pierce. I'm Jim Ross for Joel Watts. Join us next week. We'll see you next week, everybody, on Mid-South Wrestling. The Hacksaw Jim Duggan, one of the most popular wrestlers in professional wrestling today and one of the kings at Mid-South and Houston Wrestling. And he's up against a rugged, big, strong, tough competitor in Steve Dr. Death Williams. Both of these men have similar backgrounds. Both of these men have been known for their toughness, not only inside the wrestling ring, but also on the football field. Because Steve Dr. Death Williams, the man with the long black hair and black beard, that's the man who was four times All-American at the University of Oklahoma. And his opponent was a football star at SMU. And Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Duggan went on to play in the NFL. Atlanta Falcons, while Steve Dr. Williams went into the USFL. Both of these men realize that they can make more money and that they can have <coughs> participate in the sport they love more in professional wrestling. Good flip by Duggan. Both of these men I mentioned before are big, they're strong, so their styles are very similar as well. Your referee for this match is Carl. My name is Peter Burkholz. That's a good shot of Steve Dr. Williams at rugged individual the man who teams with ted dibiase this coming friday night in a texas tornado match and if you've never seen a texas tornado match come on down to the coliseum this friday night because dr death and ted dibiase will battle bruiser bob sweet tan and hector guerrero all four men in the ring at the same time talking about this friday night coliseum hacksaw jim duggan he is primed he is ready he wants to even the score with buzz sawyer when they meet in their tough guys showdown and stay tuned in this program because you'll see why we expect that to be one of the wildest battles of the season when Hacksaw Jim Duggan faces Buzz Sawyer. The football stance, Steve Duckett Williams knows enough about football and wrestling to know that when Duggan gets down in that three-point stance, the best place to be is outside the ring. Back of Dr. Death. I also like to urge you to stay tuned to the bigger and better Houston wrestling because we are now on channel 39 for two hours Saturday night 10 p.m. to midnight and two hours on Sunday morning 10 a.m. till noon Sunday the bigger and better Houston wrestling and later on in this program you're going to see that historic scaffold match between the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express that's when they battled last Thanksgiving weekend last year 1984 six feet above the ring on a scaffold 20 feet above the Coliseum floor you will see that match the first time on television later on this program on the bigger and better Houston wrestling Dr. Death pleading his case that his tights were pulled he's not making any inroads with Carl Fergie 
Carl Fergie asked the fans. The fans deny it. And Dr. Death is not happy about the results. Hacksaw Jim Duggan takes justice in own hands. He saw Dr. Death pleading his case. Duggan decided that maybe Steve Williams needed a little bit of convincing. And as he topples outside the ring, right by, right by ringside announcer, Cleet Dumpster of the Q Morning Zoo, Dr. Death Williams now, wishing now that he had paid more attention to the wrestling instead of the arguing with the official. He stomp on the hand, and Duggan is a tough man, but he's also a smart wrestler, and that's one of the biggest improvements of, by Duggan through the years. He was always tough. He always liked to fight inside that ring, and he was always tough to beat, but as he's gained more experience, he knows now how to incorporate that toughness into a variety of wrestling tactics and strategy that has made him one of the top contenders in the world today. Position, it's Duggan doing the crowding. Backs up Williams into the, the turnbuckle. You can see Carl Fergie giving the count. Duggan charges with that shoulder, that same shoulder that he uses so well when he was either blocking football players or knocking down wrestlers. But Dr. Death saw it coming. Dr. Death is another individual who with a lot of tremendous raw ability, as he gains more and more experience, he's going to make his name known throughout professional wrestling even more than he's done so so far. Two but no three. The match here, Coliseum continues. One fall to a finish. Dr. Death driving headbutt into the face of Duggan. You can see Duggan feeling the effects. Dr. Death driving that right fist. He better watch out because if he wants to introduce fisticuffs into this match, he may find out that Doug is that much tougher. Five minutes have gone by. Setting him up, but a good move by a big man. He wasn't able to hold him for a pin, but he sure was able to turn that situation to his advantage, but just temporarily. Dr. Death trimming down, still pumping that iron as he becomes bigger and stronger and tougher every day. He and Ted DiBiase make one of the toughest tag teams in the Mid-South and Houston wrestling area. Reverse chin lock by Dr. Death. A good hold for a man of his wrestling ability because he's got that power that's stored in the upper body. And he could squeeze his opponent not only into a submission, but it's also a great way of wearing down your opponent. That's something that Dr. Death and Duggan are both very good at, is wearing down their opponents. Not just trying to beat them in a quick one, two, three move, or just outmaneuver them in a high flying move, but to punish and wear down their opponents, and much like you're watching in this match. We've seen a few wrestling holds, but not as many as you would see with two other wrestlers. And Dr. Death driving headbutt and doing that football drill of his, that he enjoys so much. That time he fell face first right in the mat. He kissed that wrestling match right dead center inside the ropes and he still must be seeing stars from that one. Duggan's taking a lot of punishment but Houston wrestling fans know that he can. He has that ability. He has that ability to explode back into action but they've seen Hacksaw Duggan through the years fight them all and this Friday night when he battles Buzz Sawyer you're we're gonna see a different hacksaw Jim Duggan we're gonna see an enraged Jim Duggan and when you see someone Duggan who is that fired up up against someone as as unpredictable as Buzz Sawyer they have the potential to tear that ring apart this Friday night at the Coliseum especially after what has happened with hacksaw Jim Duggan and you will see that later on in this program so far go away. Duggan blocked it. Dr. Death trying to use that strength of his to drive it in, but Duggan is got an effective way of blocking that driving into the turnbuckle. Now Duggan coming up with that trademark stomp of his, that stomp that signifies that he's ready to fight, he, he's ready to battle as Dr. Death starts to fall outside the ropes. And now was a good move by Dr. Death because he wants a few minutes to allow Duggan to cool down, but Duggan 
He doesn't want to cool down. Once you rile the temper, Jim Duggan, you bet it away. And we are offering our pity to Buzz Sawyer because that's the kind of Duggan he's going to be facing this Friday night. Duggan still chasing Dr. Death. The referee chasing Duggan. And as Dr. Death goes into the ropes, he collides with Duggan. And that's 260 pounds plus on both sides of that collision. Good reversal by the Hacksaw. Now, the three-point stance. Dr. Death not aware of the fact that Duggan was waiting for him. He called Dr. Death. We got two, we got three, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan scores a big victory. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, he's ready. He's ready for Buzz Sawyer. Buzz Sawyer better be ready, and the Sam Houston Coliseum better be ready, and Houston wrestling fans better be ready because one of the biggest showdowns and one of the wildest events of the season will take place when Hacksaw Jim Duggan seeks revenge against Buzz Sawyer this Friday night at the Coliseum. We'll be back for more wrestling action in just one moment. Watching the closing moments of a landmark victory in the career of Hacksaw Butch Reed. This match is for the North American title. There you can see Carl Fergie knocked out of the ring as Butch went for the gorilla slam. Butch caught off balance as Murdoch quickly takes him in for the roll-up, but there's no referee there to make the count. Carl Fergie once again knocked outside of the ring. There Murdoch looking around for Fergie. He goes to the ropes. Hacksaw Butch Reed is capitalizing on this error as he takes Murdoch this time for the roll-up. Carl Fergie down for the count. One, two, and three. Hacksaw Butch Reed has defeated Captain Redneck Dick Murdoch here in New Orleans at the downtown municipal auditorium. There you see the 27 pounds of silver and gold being hoisted up by Carl Fergie to be handed over to Hacksaw Butch Reed, the new North American heavyweight champ. And you can see how excited and pleased these fans are in New Orleans. A great crowd on hand for this event, as you can tell by the tour of the crowd. There you see Butch holding the belt high. Let's go now to Irish McNeil's Boys Club, where Boyd Pierce and Bill Watts are standing by with the new champ. Butch Reed's a new North American champion. Butch, how's it feel? Well, I feel wet right now, y'all. But I'm hurt. I'm hurt. You know, Jig Murdoch is one hell of a champion. He's one hell of a professional athlete. He's just like a shark after blood out there. He was on my knee. I'm sitting there. My knee is swelling up on me now. And I know one thing about me being a North American champion. That has only just begun. And I know that Murdoch is coming back. And come back, Dick, the same way you gave me the shot after shot at this thing right here. I'm going to be man enough and honor you with the shot, too. And it's still going to be a fight. And I'm still going to do all I can to hold on to this belt because one thing's in my mind. Rick Flair's next. North American title, NWA title is next. I'm looking to make them. I'm looking to make history, brother. I'm looking to be the first black champion in, in the world. Thank you. All right, Hacksaw Duggan. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, what do you think of this man? Well, I, watched that, I watched that match, Jim Ross, and it was a classic match because I know Dick Murdoch. I know he's a man of integrity. I know he's a tough nut to crack. I know Hacksaw Butch Reed also is a tough guy, and I saw one great battle. My hat's off to Butch Reed, but I just want you and Dickie Murdoch not to forget one thing. That's Hacksaw Jim Duggan, like Champagne too, along with him, North American Heavyweight Championship belt. All right, Jake, your thoughts? On this? Can you say? I mean, the people seen the thing. I mean, we were back there watching and pulling. You know, we all have our favorites deep down inside. But one thing about this I can understand. It was a great contest, and anytime you put two men head to head and let them go, brother, I'm going to be there to see it. And Butch, man, I know you're hurting right now, but your heart's got to feel good, brother, because that's that first step for Flair. First step for Flair, man. He's going with it. I think he's got it, baby. You got it. See how Rick Flair can get ready, because this is the first step right here. You know, I've been North American champion before, and I know what it takes to hold on to this thing. Dick Murdoch knows. All the rest of the people that's done been North American champion knows yeah. that it's a tough job and it's not easy. It's not easy being the North American champion in the Mid-South Wrestling area. Hey, Dick. Hey, get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here right now! What's wrong with you? 
Get out of here! Get! Get out of here! All with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first the team in the red corner. A combined weight of 440 pounds. The team of Larry Clark and Broadway Joe Malcolm. to make here number one everybody knows that we were given a shot at the mid-south tag team titles these two groups wouldn't even be carrying these belts here today had we been given proper opportunity to regain the titles yes we were given the opportunity but mid-south managed to put us on the last match and by the time we got in the ring there was four minutes left and anybody in the right mind knows you can't regain titles like that in a four minute match but for all you people that were watching when the time ran out and we went off the air, these two goose got beat up all over this building. Hey, hey, wait a minute, 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 Let's hold on a minute. Everybody here who saw it saw you taking a part of getting out of here because we were doing a job on you. We were running you all out of town. You all wanted to get back to that dressing room real bad. Now, if you really wanted a fight, you were in the wrong clothes to be in the ring talking, making statements like that. Well, Where's your big gear as at? Long as, we're talking, your gear on. as long as we're talking about gear, boys, I see you two boys have your nice, shiny, matching jackets yeah, on today. That's what right, is this? That's what are right. you, the new Starsky and Hutch team? No, Doc, 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 hey, Doc. No, here it is, Doc, here it is. This is Robert, and this is Ricky. This is the new Rock and Roll Express. Well, let me tell you, boys, something. I know you're trying to imitate the Rock and Roll Express. You can't even match up to the Rock and Roll Express, boys. I want to tell you that. If anything, you're just cheap imitations. But as far as the rock and roll goes, baby, it's not here to stay because you're looking That's at what right. set the rock and roll right out of Mid-South. And I'm going to tell you something else. We're going to make it easy for you. You say you're wrestling champions? Yes, All right. Well, I've already talked to Grizzly Smith. We can get a contract signed. I guarantee you we'll be here in our gear next week. It won't be at the end of the show. It'll be with plenty of time. And if you two fools want to look like idiots, huh. we'll make it idiots right in the middle of the ring. You get that contract, you sign it, you name the time and the place, because we'll take you on once and again, after time after time, baby. You do it right now, anytime. time. Well, there's the introduction, and there's the challenges, and the big talk, Larry Clark and Joe Malcolm taking on Mid-South Tag Team title holders, Wildcat Wendell Cooley and Al Perez. So, Bill, the verbal battle has already been underway with that barrage, and now physical action starts as Tommy Gilbert signifies for the bell. Boys, a lot of things are happening, and I'll say one thing. Uh, I'm getting more impressed with Perez and Cooley. You know, these guys were true underdogs when they won those titles. When the Cooley had not really been that impressive. He had the ability, but he hadn't got the winning tradition. Al Perez certainly has all the technique and all the ability and the winning tradition, and there's been a chemistry about them. But what I was impressed with, generally Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death intimidate people, and they get out there and they play mental games with them. But Perez and Cooley stood right up to them and said, hey, get ready, get your gear on, let's get it on. They didn't take one back step. They didn't even look like they were intimidated one bit. I hope the Grizzly Smith makes that match. I'll be here next week checking that one out. Wendell Cooley in the ring. Larry Clark. Perez tagging in. These guys have become a smooth team. They've defended the title. They haven't backed down from anybody. Gaining a lot of confidence. Standing to play. Al Perez has that good amateur background. It's evident in his, in his, te in his technique. Larry Clark is really paying the price out there. These guys are fired up. They're tired of people saying that they should be the champions. Al Perez says, enough said. We've got the titles. 
There's that suplex. Look at that arch. Tremendous arch. It, that is fantastic. Yes. One, two, three. And the victory for the Mid-South Tag Champions, Wendell Cooley and Al Perez. We'll have the Bruise Brothers in action after this word from the exciting Mid-South Wrestling Television. Paul, with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing the team in the red corner at a combined weight of 450 pounds, Jerry Gray and Tony Falk. as they take on Tony Falk in the white and his partner from Tampa, Florida, Jerry Gray. Paul Fergie waiting for one man from each team and he called for the bell and quickly, Jerry Gray is over, Bill. Jerry Gray is an aggressive son of a gun, but he better be these Bruce brothers. We've seen them before. There was another member of the team, Troy Graham. He got his leg badly broken. He's been unable to wrestle ever since. But the Mad Dog, and listen to this crowd, they love him. And of course, Pork Chops Cash. He has been walking tall for a long time. They got soul where well, there ain't no soul. I don't, I don't want you to think that they're going to go out there with the same technique as Al Perez because these guys are not going to be technicians. They're going to go out there and go alley street style and they're going to get down like Pork Chop says, ghetto street style. The mad dog in there with Tony Falk. Reverse elbow. Double arm whip. These guys are as bad as the Chicago Bears, my friend. They are bad. Monsters of the Midway. I might add right now here at the Shreveport at the Boys Club out here on the fairgrounds, the State Fair is going on. It seems like every year when the State Fair is going on that we're taping. Something happens. Something devastating, something exciting, totally unexpected. Seems like it just gets in the air this time of year. Well-oiled team, the Bruce Brothers from Chicago. One, two, three. Mad Dog Boyd makes the tag for his team and takes the victory along with Porkchop Cash. We'll be right back after this important match. Mid-South Wrestling, one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first in the blue corner at 234 pounds from Louisville, Kentucky, Steve Constance. Phenomenon, the creature, the man from Valley of Death, humongous. As the introduction, Jim Ross introducing Steve Constance and Sir Oliver Humperdinck doing the honors for Humongous. He is awesome. Steve Constance came to Mid-South with a young partner named Tim Ashley. Tim Ashley was in a match, a tag team match against this one Humongous. He received a brain concussion and decided that professional wrestling wasn't the sport for him. And he went back to whatever it is people do that just aren't tough enough. And Steve Constance, a powerful built young athlete, good looking kid, has it all, except maybe the intestinal fortitude it takes and the guts it takes, but he's in against somebody that could put a chill in anybody's heart. You see the tremendous power of Humongous. And of course, we've been getting a lot of mail about that hockey mask. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what rules and regulations we make, they're gonna find ways around them. It's up to Jake the Snake, Hacksaw Duggan, 
people that are facing this guy, Butch Reed, they got to figure a way to fight fire with fire because as far as we're concerned, if he can, they can take the necessary steps. This is like the Midnight Rider. He used to shock folks, I understand, with about an eight-cell Duracell hot shot. There's got to be a way if there's a will. But this man is awesome, and Steve Condon doesn't have the will or the way. Hasn't broken yet. Shin on Amaki. It's a version of the sleep. Humperdinck again with that control. I don't know what it does. It's like this guy is programmed. And when Humperdinck puts those fingers in there, there's something, I don't know if it's from his fingerprint or what it is, but it's almost like post-hypnotic suggestion. And once again, it's successful for Humongous the Victor. The match you want to see, Jake the Snake versus Dirty Dutch Mantel coming up. Bring one this. fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first in the red corner. At 236 pounds from Oil Trough, Texas, Dirty Dutch Mantel. It's a base 251 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia. The man with a DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts. Uh, if you just hold on just a second, and I can get Dutch Mantel to cool his heels just for a minute, I got something I got to say, man. Thank you. What I want to ask you, Jim Ross, is to stand here because I want you to know this, man. I know Mid-South has been getting a lot of letters talking about that mask Humongous is wearing. Well, I'll tell you something about Mid-South. Mid-South is not the one standing in the ring fighting the man. I am. I am. Now, I know that you guys are moving as fast as you can on taking the mask off because everybody knows that ain't right. Right? Okay. But you're not moving fast enough for me. <laughs> That's the problem. Now, I know you're doing everything you can. Like I said, I know the lawyers are playing the games. I know they're doing the things that Humperdinck has to do to try to hold this thing back. Okay, that's me. Fight fire with fire the ways I've always lived. I've got something for you, humongous. I've got something that's going to hurt you bad. It's going to make us even up when we step into the ring. Because I can fight any man as long as he stands in this ring and faces me and ain't got nothing to slap on his head and pound somebody's face in because I am the man <laughs> with the DDT. Bill, he is ready. That's Jake the Snake DDT taking on DDM, Dirty Dutch Mantel from All Trough, Texas. Carl Fergie, got them separated. All the arm and action underway. I'll tell you, it's really picking up. A great television main event. This is main events for the rest of the Mid-South program today. Some fantastic matches. The competition here, again, the main thing about the mail we get from all over the country is the people are so happy with the caliber of matches they get here on Mid-South. They get main event matches right here on TV. I want to say one thing about Jake's comments. This is the same guy that DDT'd Terry Taylor on a steel chair and split him for 23 stitches. You understand what I'm saying? He's got a hold that many people want outlaw. So if you start barring this and barring that, you get into a bunch of legal things, and nobody wins anything legal except the lawyers. Exactly, Bill. So I think Jake is at least taking the right approach. He says, I got something, Humongous, that's going to even it up. Well, if he's got something to add to the DDT, it's got to be awesome. But that's the only way. He's right. Mid-South can't fight his battles. He's got to handle it. And right now, he's got Dirty Dutch Mantel, one of the toughest, roughest, most rugged guys, a former television champion, right here in the ring. Arm bar. Dirty Dutch. Every tack Dutch is like a complete weapon. He attacks you with everything he's got in his arsenal. He's complaining to the referee about Jake pulling the hair. The referee warning Jake. The crowd not happy with that. I tell you, when you're Jake the Snake or Butch Reed or Hacksaw Duggan, they really want to handle their own battles. They don't want to have to hide behind rules and regulations. Jim Duggan is one step away from explosion all the time anyway, and he's got a two-before collection that's well used. And Butch Reed is as bad as he comes. You don't see Butch go out and complain about any raw deals. When he gets beat or gets hurt, he just saddles up and trains harder and gets tougher. And look at him. He's on top of the pile. He's the man. He's the North American champion. You talk about pressure. He's going to have more pressure than he ever believed being a North American champion. Plus, he's got a bounty hunter on his trail. Whoa, Jake almost got it. Jake.
Jake almost hooked it up. He almost hooked it up. Jake is over 6'5 and gives it that left hand. Dirty Dutch knows he had a close call. Well, we got a fantastic main event coming up next. Tag team action. The Fantastics against Mr. Unpre Unpredictable, Dick Slater, with his ballet, I guess you'd say, Dark Journey, and Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. Then we have Hacksaw Duggan against El Casario. So we have some terrific action. Stay tuned. Looks like Dutch caught him in the solar plexus, Boyd, with that knee. Well, Dutch is really becoming an aggressor now, Bill, because he realizes he was very lucky to escape that DDT. That's right. It makes you desperate out there. You know, that's like Kareem Jabbar with a sky hook. Some people can take what other people have the opportunity to take and perfect it further than anybody I've ever seen. I saw Roddy Piper the other day attempt a DDT. He hadn't got the technique for it. We so, say while it goes, often imitated but never duplicated. That's the whole Jake the Snake has of DDT. That's right. Reverse chin lock. Carl Fergie checking to be sure it's on the chin and not on the throat in a strangle. Of course, a fine line between a strangle and a sleeper. A sleeper can be across the carotid. A choke is across... The throat there cutting off the air, whereas well, the sleeper cuts off the blood. But Jake the Snake with that leverage, he fires on you. He first buckles Dirty Dutch. He really hit him. Went for that high knee. Dutch is a veteran. He's a veteran. And you see, he's right back on the attack. He said he left fear in Vietnam. And since he's been there, he fears no man. Pounding away. Carl Berge trying to stay on top of his ass. Jake the Snake. Slid out on the floor. But Dirty Dutch is going right after him. We may have a pier six brawl. Dirty Dutch is going right after Jake the Snake. But you've got to realize the snake, like his namesake, oftentimes lures you in. And there it is. There it is. He sets the hook. He sets the DDT. And listen to this crowd. They're on their feet. Now quick is quick. Jake the Snake with his DDT. Put it on, Dirty Dutch Mantel, for a victory. The Fantastics coming up against Dick Slater and Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. So you stay right with us. We'll return right after this message from Mid-South Wrestling Television Network. This tag team event on Mid-South Wrestling one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first the team in the red corner. At 260 pounds from St. Pete, Florida, Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. His partner, 236 pounds from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater. Boy, this thing's fired up. There's still no bell yet. There's no bell yet. Well, Dark Journey is still in the ring, Bill. Bobby Fulton has come fired back on Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. They're not going to take off their jackets or anything. It looks like it. He's called for the bell. And we're off to the races. And this will be a phenomenal tag team match because I guarantee you Fulton and Rogers are really upset. And they're quick. But you see the Mad Dog. The most intense, explosive, powerful, tenacious individual I've seen in a long time. And Dick Slater, Mr. Unpredictable. The man that got 25000 up front from Ric Flair. And apparently Ric Flair flew to Houston and presented him with a whole briefcase more money. And now Butch Reed, winning the title, has become the object of his quest. Tommy, Tommy, lay it on him. Lay it on him, Tommy boy. Don't take anything. Oh. Tommy, don't take it from him. Don't let him intimidate you. All right. All right. I'm sorry, Boyd. I just get carried away from these kids. They got to be all heart because they're against an awesome team, an internationally known team. And the Fantastics, we saw them start right here. This is a rock and roll, did We've seen so many youngsters develop. We're so proud of them. Got 
to use their quickness and their speed. They can't let Slater and Mad Dog get the upper hand and to keep one of them isolated to the ring and not allow them to tag out. They got to use their quick tag and their quickness and their aerial technique, the high risk move. Bobby Fulton, Japanese arm drag. Step, yeah, quick, he moves in under. He moves clear in under, now he shakes it at him. It's like a bull with a matador waving that red flag to Dick Slater. But Slater, tremendous amateur. I watched him wrestle amateur in the state of Florida when he was a youngster, played pro football down there. And Dick Slater, I want to tell you, is as tough as they come. He hit you one time and you come right out of your shoes. Coming up next, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the big stud against El Casario, the martial arts expert. Man, that's what they got to constantly do is keep Slater and Sawyer off their game plan. Keep them Just stay a couple of moves ahead of them. Don't slow down. Don't let them ever set up on you. Those aerial techniques, this is one thing that some of these smaller teams that are so effective is that they're tag team specialists. You get one of these guys in a single match and oftentimes he's vulnerable to the bigger guys because they'll make them carry that weight. They'll drag it out. They'll exhaust them where that size starts telling on them. But you got these youngsters in tag team action, I'd say this, stay with anybody. Inside cradle, he has Sawyer. Excuse me, that was Slater. But Slater throws him to the floor, a dark journey, looking on out there. What a controversial lady she is. She's caused a lot of problems already. I don't know what the relationship is with her and Slater. It seems to be a mysterious journey, that's for sure. You people at home will have to draw your own conclusions. The Mad Dog's in there, Tommy Rogers. Wow, did you see the power of Mad Dog? He didn't go to Tommy Rogers, quickly turning around like a cat. Back to the attack, quick tag. They've got it together tonight. Nothing boring, nothing slow about the action here on Mid-South. The most exciting wrestling in the world today. The intensity, the movement, the athletes, the conditioning. The toughest athletes in professional wrestling today. That's our trademark. That's what we'll continue to always have. You see Dick Slater tee off on Bobby Fulton. The crowd is calling for Bobby to make the tag. They realize Bobby and Tommy got to keep the tags going. Tommy is exhorting his partner from the outside. But Dick Slater, a bounty hunter. You know what I think of bounty hunters. Like Butch Reed said, they're back jumpers. Butch better be having eyes in the back of his head because he's on the hunt. Wow, dark journey. Dark journey. He walked over and kicked him. I don't think the kick hurt. It's the insult. Look at her taunting. I'm telling you, boy, the woman's yeah. place is not at ringside. I'm sorry, I may sell just a, like a, a, a chauvinist, but I think a woman should be pretty and in the home. But if she gets into a man's place, sometime, somewhere, one of these guys is going to treat her like a guy, and I'm going to have to say she'll get what she deserves. Slater, quickly out, behind, from the behind of Tommy Rogers, the Fantastics in a lot of trouble. Like you said, Dark Journey was toning and adding that verbal abuse. It's a hard thing to be distracted. I don't think they know what to do. They don't know whether to, uh, to, to verbally threaten her. I, don't, I know none of them wants to retaliate physically, but I don't know how much somebody's going to take. Standing through play by Slater. Bulls in a lot of trouble out there. Saw you're in for the pin. One, two, it's, oh, Bobby got the foot over the ropes. Broke the count. Inside cradle. This match is nip and tuck. You see why you have to be in such great condition to wrestle here on Mid-South. There's not a lot of freighting around, not a lot of showing off. You know, a lot of the papers and around the country have been talking about all the show business. Well, let me tell you something. When you're here in Mid-South, you better be able to hook them up and get your boots on and get out there and go because it's just not the way it is. The top guys are the toughest athletes. We play no favorites. See the tremendous athlete. Watch this athletic ability. Did you see that? Did you see that, boy? One, two, three. One, two, three. And the team of Dick Slater and Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer take the measure of the Fantastics and in the ring joining in the celebration is Dark Journey. 
Now coming up, Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus El Casario. You stay with us. Action returns right after this word from Mid-South Red. All or television time remaining. Introducing first in the red corner at 235 pounds from Puerto Rico, El Casario. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring at 275 pounds from Glens Falls, New York, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Come on, baby. Excuse me, but old Hacksaw's got a little announcement to make. You know, all these pretty boys come into Mid-South and they all got themselves some ballet. And everybody says, well, Hacksaw Duggan, how come you to L.A.? Well, that's because I believe a woman's place is in the home or out there in the bleachers supporting people. I don't believe some hard-nosed chick should come down here and be screaming, biting, and scratching like a lot of people are doing around Mid-South. Like I said, maybe a few of these so-called ballets could take themselves a little example from a true lady, a lady who knows how to handle herself, a lady who will support her man, who let her stick by her when things get rough. But no, it seems like so often, so often, so many other people got to grab something off the street, throw it up in a mask, and stick it outside the ring. You know what I'm talking about, Jim Moss? A true lady keeps her mouth shut, and that's right. That is exactly what I mean coming down here now. You got Slater, Mr. Big Shot Dick Slater, coming down here, and he's got in along his side, and he's going to come in here and give me some lift. Well. Tell you something, Duggan. Don't you come out here and insult me and insult my lady. And I come to Mid South area, not for you, but if you want a piece of me, you know where I am. Now, if you want to talk about ladies, that's a lady. Yeah, that's right, baby. You tell them. I didn't come out here and insult your lady. I came out here and insulted her, and she's no lady, baby. Boy, we got a Donnie Brook going. We got a Donnie Brook going. This was scheduled to be Duggan and El Casario. But Dark Journey slapped him. The Dick Slater's in it. And we got a Donnie Brook going. I mean it to go. A Jim Duck double tub hombre. And it, he and Dick Slater are tooth and nail. Here goes Mad Dog Bus. Sorry. Watch out, Jimbo. Watch out from behind. The Mad Dog's attacking him. The Mad Dog. A oh, Jim's, girl, Jim's girlfriend. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't think Slater. I mean, Sawyer even realized. Oh, That's Sawyer. Mercy. Sawyer did. He just dropped that elbow on her. Was that an accident? He Was that an out. accident? He put her out. She is devastated. She is devastated. Now, just both of them. Watch Dick Slater. My golly, football kicked him. He football kicked Jim Duggan right in the face. Duggan's head split wide open. The referee's been thrown out on the floor. This thing is out of control. Grizzly Smith needs to get some referees down here. Jim Duggan has not moved. He or she has not moved. Jim Duggan is being annihilated by these two animals. We've got to get some help down here. Duggan's lady has, is out cold, Bill. There's no doubt about it. She's out. Here comes Cooley and Perez. Here comes Cooley and Perez. Mad Duck, Sawyer, and Dick Slater. Jim Duggan. Jim Duggan crawling over to his girlfriend. Jim Duggan, I'm sure, came out to make light of the situation, to point out a situation, and everybody was behind him. And it's exploded into a, a total chaos, into pandemonium. And his his girl is she is laid out. Everybody's coming. Boy, I don't I don't I have never seen anything like this. 
she's not moving this. Jim's more concerned about her than his own entry. He's, he is, the crimson is flowing profusely. He still has moved a She muscle. had moved, not Grizzly Smith queen. out there, the referees. She is, again, I don't think the first moment, I don't think that Slater or Sawyer realized that she was on his back or what was on his back, and he just reacted, drove into the turnbuckle. And that second time when he got hit, he was falling off balance. But then it looked to me like just maybe he might have dropped an elbow, not caring. Duggan's got her up. Duggan has her up. We don't know, we don't know her condition. I, I think Duggan's like a wounded animal protecting, protecting his loved one. I don't think anybody can really get close enough or get him calmed down enough to examine her. No way, he has only one thing in mind, that's the lady. Boy. Uh, boy, I, I think get it out of my points way. out again, out of my way. this is not get a place for way. ladies, and this lady has been battling her to Duggins, carrying her, he's carrying her out, he's, he's running her out. We have no idea, we have no idea how badly, we'll try to find out, ladies and gentlemen. We're so sorry. Rick Flair in two weeks, Rick Flair will be here. Ricky Gibson, the brother of Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express, is coming by next week. Please join us, then. I've, I've got to apologize for what happened. Well, up in the ring, we have the makings of the first scaffold match Let's to be held in the state of Texas. Quit. At all times during this match, the aisles must be clear. This is one of the most dangerous matches in professional wrestling. Do not stay at the ring. Do not stay in the aisle. This is the first one that you, this is the first one that I have seen. And I admit that when I saw this match in the Sam Houston Coliseum on the day after Thanksgiving in 1984, my heart was in my mouth most of the time. You are looking now at the theme of lover boy Dennis Condry and Bobby Eaton. They form the Midnight Express. They are part and parcel of this scaffold match. And the rock and roll, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, they are ready to go. And you see now as they start climbing, you get some idea of what the height of the scaffold is and the risk that is being taken by all four of these men in getting up on this kind of a contraption. This is the ultimate in exciting action. You could say we have lifted wrestling new heights and it would be absolutely correct. But these fellows here demonstrate the modern athlete who are willing to take chances and who recognize the fact that people who buy tickets are entitled to see something for their money. If that same spirit pervaded every sport, the world of sports would really be a great place. Now as we look in on the Rock and Roll Express who have come up there, we can see the reluctance of the Midnight Express to come up on the other side taking their time, getting up there slowly, measuring the steps, and Dennis Condry, as he decides to come down again, is not quite certain that he wants to submit to this uh, new and unusual punishment. Surely the, um, the manner in which he climbs up to the scaffold is an indication uh, that he doesn't want to come down real fast. The extra time of this program the extra time, the new expanded version of Houston Wrestling, now two hours, is enabling us to bring to you this additional match out of the history of Houston Wrestling. And Houston Wrestling has a long and proud history. Come 1986, we'll be starting 20 years with Channel 39. We'll also be starting our 38th year continuous year of telecasting here in Houston. So look that scaffold over. Wonder whether you would like to go up the scaffold and face the possibility of a drop down to the canvas of a ring or the possibility of missing the canvas in some manner and 
going an extra four feet down to the concrete. You keep in mind as you watch this that there is live wrestling at the Sam Houston Coliseum this coming Friday night with 20 wrestlers in action, the North American title on the line, two great tag riots. It's going to be a great night of action. Butch Reed defends the North American title against Humongous and a tough guy showdown when Hacksaw Jim Duggan goes up against the mad dog Buzz Sawyer. So we've got the Midnight Express up there. They're on the track. And the crowd here, and it was a tremendous crowd. The crowd is rooting for the Rock and Roll Express as they come out on the middle portion of the scaffold, which is where the rest is expected to take place. But as Dennis Condry finds out, the footing is a little bit insecure because the scaffold shakes uh, sometimes almost imperceptibly. But as it shakes, it, it seems like they have mounted a huge wave to the people who are up on the scaffold. Ricky Morton looking over. He doesn't want to make any precipitate moves until he himself has felt out the possibilities of using the scaffold to good advantage. The referee, that's Carl Fergie. Carl Fergie is down in the ring. Carl says, my mother didn't raise any stupid children and I'm not gonna go up and try to referee you this from the top of the scaffold. So there is Dennis Condry. Fans are screaming, he cannot hear his manager Jim Cornette they are all making it impossible for the for the um, manager to get his message across and the fact that he is going now to at a great lengths to advise his boys as to what he can what they can do and what they can't do is a is significant There he is, Jim Cornette. The words are passing back and forth, but they are literally swallowed up. There is also referee Ron West in the ring, and Cornette is the object of a barrage of sound, the like of which the Coliseum sees just about every Friday night, but seems louder for this particular match. We're looking from the end of the Rock and Roll Express, you saw Robert Gibson make a jumping move out there. It looked a little like Jim Mack for a moment, but he was just trying to test the nerve of the Midnight Express as one of them advanced out of the corner, and it's Dennis Condry who is still...